communism. Boo. That's supposed to be a big scary word which is associated with the horrors of Stalin and the Gulag, but communism is back, baby, and it's back because Ash Sarkar, a prominent activist and journalist, disclaimer, friend of mine as well, went on national television with Piers Morgan, one of the most odious people that's ever existed, and when accused of seeing Barack Obama as her hero, replied, He's not my hero, I'm a communist, he you idiot. <laughs> you didn't plan any that went viral, we've got teen magazines talking about it, t-shirts are being made, it's being discussed on national television. So I want to talk to Ash, what actually is communism? Can we disassociate it from the horrors of the 20th century? And what about the horrors of capitalism as well? So if you're going to put communism in one pithy little sentence, mm -hmm. which you could not quite fit on a t-shirt, or maybe you could if it was quite small letters, what would, you, what would it be? I think it would be two things. So I imagine like a semicolon in the middle, okay. and that's my way it's of getting doing a lot of work, the semicolon, I can tell. I have to see, literally a graduate man, I love a semi semicolon. Communism is a belief in the power of people to organise their lives as individuals, their social lives, their political and their economic lives, without being managed by a state and private property is a barrier to the distribution of those resources that we need to not just survive but thrive and not a facilitator of it. That is a very long sentence. Yeah. It, it makes sense, it works. But it's got a semicolon in it, There's so it's a, fine. about three semicolons in that, Ash, and it's dishonest and to suggest otherwise. So communism is now all the rage. One of many sentences over the last three years I never thought I'd say. You've been interviewed in Teen Vogue about it. Is this, like, you're thinking, wow, I've helped to kind of bring it back or is it kind of now just gone a bit commodified? I mean, it's just incredibly surreal. It is. So I got up really early. I thought I was just going to talk about the Stop Trump protest, and then suddenly I'm having to yell that I'm literally a communist. And you idiot. You, you, I mean, yeah, and called Piers Morgan an idiot. I'm really, really glad that people have responded to it mostly positively. And I think it's because Piers Morgan is so odious that he's accidentally rehabilitated communism. <laughs> Which I couldn't have done on purpose. Yeah. No, it's team effort. It's team effort. Comrade Morgan. Right, so that word, a lot of people watching, they're going to be thinking gulags, queuing a lot, Ukrainian famine, mm -hmm. and big statues with big moustaches. Mm -hmm. Mao and Stalin are, were terrible, murdering uh, dictatorships who presided over totalitarian dystopias. My mum met Mao. Have I ever told you no. this story? No, what? So, uh, no, she didn't. She did, right. Scouts on her. He's debauched. I hope she was... Flatulent was what she told me. So if this me. is when she was a little kid. She actually lived in Beijing for a bit because her dad was a diplomat before her parents split up ah. and she moved back to this country. So she lived in Beijing for a bit and at some kind of function, uh, she was told to get up and say hello to Mao and he let rip with a ginormous fart. What's wrong with just basic politeness? I don't know. That I... was way down. I mean, to be fair, he, he was guilty of slightly worse crimes than that. But I know. I mean, look. You interview loads of people. How many of them have a story about them on meeting Mao? A flatulent Mao as well. Yeah, right. So like, you get what you're given. What is true is the Maoist regime tried to get everyone to create their own pig iron in the back garden. Mm -hmm. Agriculture stopped. Huge numbers died in a terrible famine. That's not to make an apologism for Maoism or Stalinism. But if you actually apply methodology mm. to capitalism, I'm thinking about the international slave trade. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about World War I. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about fascism, and before anyone says that's socialism, uh, these were regimes which were helped to power by big business in Italy mm -hmm. and Germany to liquidate the left, where big businesses profited directly mm -hmm. from the Holocaust. Tens of millions of people died under capitalism, but we don't... That is not a discussion we have, is it? Mm. I mean, I think that the analysis of deaths under communism is a example of important history done badly. I'm not saying uh, for one minute that we look at those aspects of communist history and we simply paper over them with a hashtag or a t-shirt or a meme. I think it requires really careful engagement. But we must apply a similar level of engagement and a similar amount of critique to the conditions under which we presently live. Mm. What does it mean to be a communist in 2018? The example that I always use is housing. I think housing lends itself really well to um, communist structures of kind of you know, deprivatizing, making decisions, um, or decisions being led by people who actually use the service, live in the housing, mm. rather than people who simply own it. And then the other is an orientation towards the future. Because I think that Britain is in the midst of another industrial change from which there is no going back. As um, you get more automation, you've got this 
contradiction embedded in capitalism, which is on the one hand, you replace workers with fixed capital, you become more precarious because you can't have, you know, your, your labor's worth less compared to this machine that can do it easier for 24 hours and isn't going to do stuff like go on strike. But also, it shows you a glimpse of what a world without work and scarcity can look like. So you've got machines doing all the work and it means that you can focus on the things that you feel really passionately about, whether that's exploring different ways of living communally or pursuing like a craft or an art or dedicating time to your loved ones. And that is this like little promise of utopia within this thing that's making you more precarious and uh, making you poorer. And as that tendency towards automation gets sharper, in the UK I think it's going to be one in three jobs in the north, one in five across the country as a whole, and 40% in Hayes and Harlington. You either, I think, have a steady creep towards fascism in terms of increasingly authoritarian and violent management mm -hmm. of that bit of the population which is excluded from the means of survival. I don't think we'll have enough retraining um, or sort of new tech utopia jobs to cope with that or you find new ways to redistribute that abundance in a way which means that people have to work less and have more. So finally right, Corbyn's Labour Party is actually offering historically speaking pretty mild social democracy mm -hmm. many of its policies are already in place in lots of Western mm -hmm. Europe um, and in the 1970s well we we had a higher tax rate and more extensive nationalization than Corbyn's Labour Party is proposing mm -hmm. so what hope is there really for for the sort of communist society that you aspire to because a lot of people just go well we're getting all excited about this but actually this shows the paucity of of your ambition your mm -hmm. expectation because I mean, at the moment, we're going to settle for something which, historically speaking, is just not actually that left-wing at all. I mean, I'm not one of those vulgar Marxists that says that, you know, you've got to have the red flag flying high and, you know, a picture of Lenin across your chest in order for a political project to be worthwhile. I think that if you, as a leftist, say, well, it's all or nothing, you've made your peace with nothing. And when you look at things like excess deaths under austerity, or when you look at reliance on food banks, when you look at the fact that half young mums have to skip meals to feed their kids, I find the idea of nothing out of ideological purity mm. completely unconscionable. So I think that if your communism leads you to a politics of despair or disengagement, you are failing the legacy of Marx, in my opinion. Here's to being a, literally a communist. Truly a communist. You idiot. <laughs> That's your favourite bit? It is, I love that bit. High five. Well done. Do you high five? I spud. Oh, let's do that. Okay. Yeah. I don't think I'd get away with that. <laughs> So now that Asha's brainwashed you all into becoming communists, or has she? That's what I want to hear. What do you think about that? Are you convinced? Are you now going to call yourself a communist? What does communism actually mean? Can we actually get that stateless, classless society of material abundance freed from the tyranny of the state? Or are we just going to have to settle for some pretty watered down social democracy? I want to hear your thoughts, particularly maybe if you're on the right, leave your comments. Uh, some of them will be probably quite angry. I'm in the brace position. But I also want to hear your thoughts for guests, people you want me to interview over the summer. Uh, throw them down in the comments section as well. As ever, spread the word, subscribe. I'll see you next time.